welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high-achieving, goal-oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. Welcome to episode 91, When You Don't Feel Like You. Hello, hello, hello. How are y'all? Well, I am amazing. I just found out that one of my good friends gave birth, and she was actually a surrogate mother, and she just delivered this baby boy to two dads that um, she wanted to help give a child to. And I am just in awe at this woman. (laughs) And I have all the feelings and the tears. And my other good friend was with her in the um, delivery room. And I tell you what, Talk about a gift of a human being and giving the gift of a human being to a family that can't have kids on their own. Like, wow. (laughs) So um, just super excited for her and the new family and all the things. And um, it's just an amazing way to like get some news in the morning. It's so good. Like amazing things are still happening in the world, you guys. There's babies being born and family members being added and all sorts of things. So don't give up hope. Find those good stories and feel them. So just some updates for me. I got a crown in the mail yesterday. (laughs) They're just such random things. Um, I follow Susan Hyatt and she's an amazing life coach. She is an author. Um, She's a TED speaker. She's amazing. She wrote this book called Bear. So if you guys um, want to check it out or go read about it, I highly recommend that you do. Susan Hyatt is her name. And she sent me a legit crown in the mail because I'm attending um, an online event that she's putting on to sort of finish strong for 2020. And I told her that I got an Airbnb to focus and to not have any interruptions. She's like, send that lady a crown. (laughs) So I got a crown in the mail. Um, which is amazing to receive on a Monday after a tough work day. Um, so I got a crown and I've been working on things. I ran eight miles this weekend, which was amazing. Like it was cool outside. I ran like a whole minute faster than I normally do at a pretty hefty length. Um, so I've just been trying to relish in the amazing things that are going on right now instead of focusing on all of the things that are terrible in the world. And in that work, um, you know, I was sort of wallowing around in my own self-misery lately (laughs) and I got some coaching and what the coach told me was my thought, everything's shitty right now, or it's all too much is a thought that I was having a lot was causing me to feel this heaviness and this sadness about the world. And she's like, you know, you don't have to think that. Like you really don't, it's just a thought that you're having that it's too much, but it's not true. I'm like, well, I want to think that right now. I need to think that because that's what everybody else is thinking. (laughs) And then I realized like after the coaching call was over, I'm like, I really don't have to think that it's too much. I, you know, there's always things happening in the world, right? There's always tragedies. There's always death. There's always disease. There's always, um, natural disasters like fires and tornadoes and hurricanes, right? Like all of this stuff is always happening all the time. We're just not walking around thinking about all the things all the time, typically, right? And so I think right now we're thinking about all of the things all the time because it feels like the world is ending sometimes, but it's always happening. This is not anything new that hasn't happened before or will continue to happen. So when we think thoughts like, it's all too much, that causes us to feel this, you know, terrible down feeling. And when we feel that way, we sometimes don't do the things that we want to be doing, right? We want to hide, we want to stay safe, we might drink, we might eat, we might over scroll, we might complain, right? So just notice if you might have been thinking those thoughts too, and and you don't have to keep thinking them. And it's not too much. The human race has handled a lot 
right? And this is no different. So we will move on. We will get through these things that we're experiencing collectively right now. But today I wanted to talk to you guys about when you don't feel like you. I talked to so many of you. Um, maybe if you're interested in joining my program or you're in my program and you say, you know, I just don't feel like myself. I used to exercise. I used to, you know, go out and do interesting things and, um, you know, try new hobbies and I felt good about things and I had goals and now I just don't feel like myself. I just, I'm, I feel like I'm stuck in a rut, right? And then they get into this habit of drinking wine and then before you guys even realize it, you just don't feel like themselves. This could be like a 10 year thing, right? It just kind of slowly creeps up on you. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you're just like, this sucks. Like, this is not how I want to live, right? And you don't feel inspired and you're not getting out there and doing the things. Sometimes our homes get cluttered or unorganized. You're not getting out there and exercising. Maybe your relationships are feeling flat. And then you might tell me that you just want to feel like yourselves again. And instantly I know when you tell me this, that you've lost that connection with yourself and the process of you getting back to knowing yourselves and enjoying yourselves is what is required to permanently stop over drinking. Okay. Like when you say, I don't feel like myself, it's because there's a disconnect there. Okay. And that disconnect is caused by numbing how we currently feel. Okay, so when you want to lose weight and you keep over drinking, you feel bad about yourself. Okay, you want to stop over drinking and you keep over drinking, you also feel bad about yourself. And when you say that you want to change and you want to do something different and you don't, you feel bad about yourself. Okay, not because you didn't do it, but because of how you're thinking about yourself. You aren't living the authentic life that you actually desire. That's why it hurts. You don't feel like you when you do the things that you don't want to be doing. Does that make sense? You're out of alignment with your true dreams and desires as a person. When you lose that connection, that purpose, that self-love, and then because of how we're programmed as humans, right? We've got that motivational triad. We're seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, and saving energy. Our brain tells us the easiest way out of feeling bad is by drinking wine or eating or scrolling or cleaning or doing some other things just to keep us distracted from the non-contentment, even if that's a word, non-contentment, I don't know. We're not content with how we feel about our lives, okay? Those things help you distract you with how you feel for a little bit, but then the next day, there you are again, right? Feeling the same way, unsatisfied, disconnected, blah, flat, angry, frustrated, The list goes on and on. Those feelings you have are caused by how you think about yourself. And instead of saying you're going to go on a cleanse or a diet or go on a 30-day break, I recommend that we take a look at how you are thinking about you. If you don't feel like you, it's because your thoughts about yourself are probably not good, okay? So if you can go back and remember when you did feel good in your life, when you were doing all the things, you felt alive, you felt motivated, all that, what were you thinking about yourself? Really take some time and think about that. Even pause it now and like go back and grab a journal and write some of those thoughts down. Okay? You aren't going to start feeling like yourself again if you don't do this work, you guys. (laughs) Right? Just adding an exercise routine or taking a break from alcohol isn't going to fix this. So for me recently, I'm going to tell you guys some of my own struggle with this. Recently, when I looked in the mirror, my brain was shooting off all sorts of self-loathing loathing thoughts like, I'm ugly. You look like a boy. You look too intense. You aren't attractive. You're too much. You're too edgy. You aren't feminine looking. You aren't sexy. I had these thoughts in my head, you guys, when I looked in the mirror. And I thought, I don't look like me. I don't feel like me. And it wasn't because of how I actually looked. It was because of my own brain thinking these thoughts. I felt terrible. I felt like I lost that wholeness that I had. My outside matched what I was feeling inside. I worked really hard to feel like I finally looked and felt like myself over this journey of my own that, you know, I stopped over drinking and losing all the weight. I felt good about myself and then slam, (laughs) I looked in the mirror and all of these thoughts come rushing in. 
The problem wasn't how I looked. The problem was that I was out of alignment with who I truly am. I felt terrible when I had those thoughts because I believed them for a bit. Thankfully, because I'm a coach and I recognize my own thoughts as optional and they can be changed, I reached out and I got some coaching and I coached myself a lot to shift this pattern of thinking. Who I truly am isn't someone who thinks horrible thoughts about myself. Who I truly am has nothing to do with my hairstyle or my weight or how much money I have or how or anything externally in my life. Who I truly am is amazing no matter what, and when a part of my brain was generating thoughts that weren't true, I fell out of alignment with who I truly am. You guys following me here? (laughs) Really listen to what I'm saying. The point I'm trying to make is this. If you are over drinking and you don't feel like yourself, it's because of how you are thinking of yourself when you do over drink when you don't follow through, when you aren't doing the things you want to be doing. These thoughts you have keep you out of alignment with the badass that you really are. The real you knows this, okay? And it's trying to get your attention with those feelings. It's saying, hello, I don't feel good here. But your brain is not letting you pause and figure it out. It's motivating you to go pour a glass of wine instead. If you want to feel like you again, the real badass that's inside of you, that does amazing things, that's accomplished all of her goals, you've got to be willing to reveal the thoughts you have about you now, today, okay? Those thoughts are the most important thing to uncover. I know a lot of you want to say, no thanks, (laughs) that sucks, I don't want to go there. Listen, if you don't look at that, you aren't going to change a thing. You'll continue to try some program or diet or reading mantras or books or listening to podcasts to try and figure and find the answer out to, or you know, give you the, the solution to something that will finally help. And the answer to feeling like yourself again lies within you. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> the answer to feeling like yourself again lies within you. You have the answer right now. You have to uncover your thoughts, the tape. It has been playing in your head likely for years. That's the first step. Let those thoughts come up. Write them down. Look at them outside of your brain. Okay? And then decide to start changing them. No matter what you are doing or not doing, you are amazing. You are worthy, you are capable, and you are worth fighting for. You are worth doing this work even when it feels terrible. Even when you want to cry your eyes out, even when you feel so terribly, you just want to crawl under the covers. You and the work of going, th- of going through this process are worth it because this is what happens when you are willing to do it. You're going to feel better about yourself. You will learn how to feel self-love and worthiness and capability and strength and motivation. And when you feel that way again, you will feel like you and you will then do all the things you love to do. And when you do this, you will be in alignment and you'll stop looking for the easy fix to feel better through the nightly glass of wine. And you won't want to numb out. You'll want to slow down and uncover why you are feeling and how you are feeling instead of automatically going and running towards the wine cabinet or that bag of chips, right? Because you will feel love for yourself even when you don't feel good. And you will know that nothing has gone wrong and it's likely just some thought errors. Self-love is not fluffy, okay? I think it's been coined this term as like self-care and self-love and baths and, you know, spa treatments and, you know, glasses of wine. It's not that. Learning to love yourself and being committed to feeling like the real you that you know, that is some serious, badass, tough-as-nail shit. (laughs) Not everyone is willing to do that. As a matter of fact, not many of you will do it. But if you do... You are going to gain some super badass powers that will take your life to a whole new level. You will be able to accomplish more and feel better and finally step into living that authentic, amazing life that you want to live, okay? And a lot of times we need help to do this. I know I did and sometimes I still do. It's hard for us to see these thoughts as just thoughts. We think that they are facts about ourselves. And you can get there faster. You can get through this faster and on the way to feeling like you when you have a coach to help you. 
an Inside My Stop Over Drinking and Start Living program, we dedicate a whole month to self-love and doing this work. It's the most common thread that I coach on. I can help you uncover these thoughts and help you generate new ones to help you be on your way to feeling like yourself again and doing the things that you actually want to be doing. You are worth it. If you want to join me, request a 20-minute call by clicking the link in the show notes. Listen, you've waited long enough, okay? If you feel like you are not yourself, it is time to figure that out. You don't have to continue on feeling like this way. There is another side to this. I promise it's worth the pain that you're going to go through, every ounce of it. Let that suffering serve you. Right now you are suffering and it's not serving you. You're just continuing to numb and to do the same old things. But what I'm offering you is, yes, it's going to be a little painful. You're going to have some emotions. But when you're willing and you say, I want to feel that, and you uncover what you think about yourself, and then you start to work to change it, you don't have to stay here. That pain will get you somewhere. The pain that you're in right now is keeping you stuck and it's not necessary. Okay? I love you guys so much. Show up. Find yourself. Do the things that you want to do. When you don't, that's what causes that pain. And then when you think about yourself and why you're not doing it and beating yourself over about it just perpetuates it. I love you so much. Talk to you next week. Bye for now. Tell me, people, you know.